This could be the beginning of something that changes how we fly forever. Not with jet fuel, not with lithium ion batteries, but with molten metal, specifically sodium. A simple element, often overlooked, now holds the potential to reshape electric aviation. Developed by engineers and scientists at MIT, this new fuel cell doesn't just promise clean energy. It stores four times more than today's top batteries, with no pressurized hydrogen tanks in sight. But is this just another lab-bound fantasy? Or can it truly take off? The chemistry is bold, the claims are big, and the stakes are sky high. Let's dive in. The big problem with jet fuel. Airplanes are engineering marvels, but they come with a hidden cost that hangs over us, quite literally. Every time a plane takes off, it burns through tons of kerosene-based jet fuel, releasing a cocktail of carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and water vapor directly into the upper atmosphere. These emissions don't just disappear, they stay, amplify warming, and contribute to climate change in ways that are more severe than ground-based transport. Estimates vary, but aviation is responsible for roughly 2 to 3% of global carbon emissions. That number might seem small, but in the transport sector alone, air travel accounts for about 10% of emissions and is growing. Worse, airlines spend around 30% of their total operating costs on fuel. That makes finding a cheaper, cleaner alternative a matter of both environmental and economic survival. Battery-powered flight has shown promise, but it hits a hard wall when it comes to energy density. Lithium-ion batteries can't store enough power to keep larger planes in the air for long. For short hops, they work. But anything beyond that, and the weight becomes a nightmare. The more batteries you add, the heavier the aircraft becomes, and the more energy you need just to lift it. So, if batteries aren't enough and jet fuel is damaging, what's left? That's the exact question researchers at MIT have been asking. And their answer? A radical rethink of what fuel can be. The promise of fuel cells. Fuel cells have long been seen as the middle ground between fossil fuels and batteries. They offer the clean electricity of batteries without long charging times or bulky weight. Most commonly, they rely on hydrogen. In a typical hydrogen fuel cell, pressurized hydrogen gas is fed into the system, where it reacts with oxygen to generate electricity. The only byproduct is water, clean, simple, and seemingly ideal. But there's a catch. Hydrogen is notoriously difficult to store and transport. It's the smallest molecule in the universe, and it leaks easily. Keeping it under control requires heavy, high-pressure tanks that add significant weight to any aircraft. Producing green hydrogen, using renewable energy to split water, is also expensive and energy-intensive. That hasn't stopped companies from trying. Firms like Zero Avia are testing hydrogen-powered aircraft, but real-world deployment is slow. Infrastructure remains a huge bottleneck, and the economics just don't add up yet. Despite all this, fuel cells continue to attract attention. Why? Because the concept is sound. They're quiet, efficient, and potentially long-range. If only we could crack the hydrogen problem, or better yet, replace hydrogen entirely. That's where MIT's sodium-based innovation steps in. MIT's unexpected breakthrough. At first glance, sodium doesn't scream innovation. It's cheap, reactive, and found in everything from table salt to street lamps. But to researchers at MIT, it represented something more. A possible key to unlocking the next generation of clean aviation. Their new breakthrough isn't just a small tweak. It reimagines the entire fuel cell system from the ground up. The design consists of three layers. On the top sits solid sodium metal, which acts as the fuel. In the middle, there's a solid electrolyte made of beta alumina, 
an older material originally developed for sodium sulfur batteries. On the bottom, a porous nickel-based foam collects the electricity and allows air to pass through. Here's what makes this system different. The sodium isn't stored separately, like hydrogen is in traditional fuel cells. Instead, it's built into the structure of the cell itself. As the cell operates, the sodium is slowly used up from within, simplifying the design and eliminating the need for bulky, high-pressure tanks. The goal was clear. Build something with higher energy density, lower cost, and fewer storage complications. What MIT came up with could be one of the most significant clean tech leaps in recent memory. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. How this fuel cell works. At its core, the MIT sodium fuel cell turns chemical energy directly into electricity using molten metal. For the system to work, the sodium on the top layer needs to be in a liquid state, which means heating it to around 100 degrees Celsius. Once molten, the sodium begins a fascinating journey through the cell. As the cell runs, sodium atoms lose electrons and become positively charged ions. These ions move through the middle layer, the solid beta-alumina electrolyte, while the freed electrons travel through an external circuit to power electric motors. After passing through the electrolyte, the sodium ions enter the bottom layer, a nickel foam that's exposed to air. Here's where it gets even more interesting. The air pumped into the system reacts with those sodium ions and electrons, producing sodium hydroxide and water. These are the exhaust products. While sodium hydroxide might sound alarming, it's a main ingredient in drain cleaner, and MIT claims it doesn't pose a threat. In fact, when released into the air, it supposedly reacts with carbon dioxide to form baking soda, which could help remove CO2 from the atmosphere and reduce ocean acidity. It's a bold claim, and if true, the exhaust might actually clean more than it harms. The results and the limitations. On paper, the performance of MIT's sodium fuel cell is impressive. It delivers an energy density between 1,000 and 1,400 watt-hours per kilogram. That's over four times higher than most lithium-ion batteries, which typically offer around 250 watt-hours per kilogram. For aircraft, where every kilogram counts, this is a massive leap. But there's a trade-off. While the energy density is high, the power density, the amount of power it can deliver at any moment, is still quite low in the prototype stage. The lab-tested cell only managed about 40 watts per kilogram, far below what would be needed for demanding moments like takeoff. There's hope, though. MIT researchers believe a scaled-up version would dramatically improve that number. And with smart engineering, such as combining it with a buffer battery, the fuel cell could still meet real-world aviation needs. One fascinating feature is how the fuel cell loses weight during operation. As sodium is consumed and the byproducts are ejected, the overall mass drops, similar to how planes burn jet fuel and land lighter. This dynamic weight reduction could offer efficiency advantages that batteries simply can't match. Still, the cell's heat requirements and exhaust handling remain major engineering challenges. Engineering Reality Check Transforming a promising lab invention into something that can survive the real world is no small task. And while the science behind MIT's sodium fuel cell is solid, the engineering hurdles are equally significant. The most immediate challenge is heat. To keep the sodium in a molten state, the fuel cell must be maintained at around 100 degrees Celsius. That means incorporating an onboard heating system or capturing and recycling waste heat from the aircraft. Either option adds complexity and weight, which eats into the very advantage this fuel cell offers. Then there's exhaust management. If sodium hydroxide reacts to form baking soda, it needs time and the right conditions to do so. In a high-speed, high-altitude environment, 
that chemical transformation might not happen as cleanly as hoped. There's also a question of whether releasing even trace amounts of sodium hydroxide into the ocean or atmosphere could pose risks over time. Unlike batteries, this fuel cell also has a moving exhaust, meaning its total mass changes during operation. While potentially efficient, this complicates aircraft balance and design. In short, while the chemistry is clever, solving these real-world problems will decide whether this becomes a revolution or just another brilliant idea left on the shelf. The business behind the tech. Beyond the lab, technology lives or dies by its economics. And this is where MIT's sodium fuel cell shows real promise. Sodium is cheap, abundant, and globally available. Unlike lithium or cobalt, which are concentrated in a few countries and face growing supply chain pressures. Compared to green hydrogen, which is still expensive to produce and transport, sodium could cut costs dramatically. The researchers estimate that sodium-based fuel could be up to 50% cheaper than green hydrogen, especially at scale. That's before factoring in the potential sale of byproducts like chlorine, which is generated during the industrial production of sodium metal. Chlorine is already in demand across various industries, meaning the process could actually create parallel revenue streams. This isn't just theory. The team has already spun out a startup called Propel Aero to bring the technology to market. One of the lead scientists, Professor Yet Ming Chiang, is part of the founding team. He's no stranger to innovation. His previous clean tech ventures have been valued in the hundreds of millions, the pieces are falling into place. If the startup can solve the engineering and safety challenges, the sodium fuel cell could soon make the leap from prototype to product. This fuel cell may not look flashy, but it could quietly change the way we power flight. With sodium as its heart, it promises higher energy, lower cost, and fewer storage headaches, all without the risks of pressurized hydrogen. But it's still early. The chemistry works, but the real world is messy. Heat control, exhaust handling, and power output all need refinement. Whether this becomes the future of aviation or fades into research archives depends on what happens next. Still, breakthroughs like this remind us that innovation often begins where we least expect it. The skies may be ready. Let's see who gets there first.